Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from MoboxGraphics.com and in this video tutorial, I'm just gonna be taking you into After Effects and show you how to get this very simple, stylized effect that kind of gives the impression that you're looking at a computer screen of a computer screen, if that makes sense. So um, it's not just like a flat background. It kind of, it has like a pixelated look without looking overly pixelated. It's kind of a cool effect. You see it all over the place, especially on news sites um, such as Vox and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna take you through it, just the layers, a couple of different layered effects. And then I'm just gonna show you how I get some screen typing on screen. So. Again, uh, pretty simple stuff, but uh, even if you're an advanced user, you might learn something new. So anyways, let's just go ahead and jump right in. So here we are in After Effects. I'm just gonna create a new composition, composition new comp. Um, I'm gonna actually make this 1920 by 1080. And uh, I'm gonna make it 59.94 frames per second and then five seconds, and that looks good. So um, I guess to start out, I'm just gonna kind of do like the Google logo type thing. So I'm just gonna start with creating a new background layer, layer new solid. And I have some color references um, on my second monitor that I'm just gonna pull from. Um, but it, basically the first color um, is just flat white. And I'm just gonna lock that layer. I'm actually gonna rename it first to background just so I know what it is and I'm gonna lock it so that way I don't accidentally grab it. And uh, now I'm just gonna pull up the text tool and I'm just gonna spell out Google, G-O-O-G-L-E. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure it's center aligned, which it is. If you don't have this, it's paragraph. You just go to Windows, um, I think it's text, character, and it'll and you'll get that. Um, so I'm just going to press Y on the keyboard and center up the anchor point, and then drag it to the center of the composition. Maybe just bring it up just a little bit, just so we could have the search bar underneath. Um, I think that this might be a little big, so I'm just gonna hit S on the keyboard and scale it down. And again, I have some colors that I'm just gonna reference um, as to make this simpler and quicker, um, your colors may vary. You obviously won't be creating the Google logo and I'm not using the exact colors from the Google logo. Um, I kind of have my own colors that I'm gonna be using. So um, again, you know, this is not the important aspect. The important part is getting the pixelated effect. So I'm just gonna breeze through this part. I'm just gonna create the search bar here and it's gonna be about that big. That looks about right. I'm gonna actually bring the stroke down to zero so I don't get the black border around. And again, press Y on the keyboard and drag the anchor point to the center. And then uh, bring out my pointer again and just make sure that this is centered in the composition just underneath the Google logo. So that's just a, our quick web page. So that's the simple part. Um, let's now go into creating the pixelated effect. So uh, what I'm probably should do first is just rename this layer to search bar just so I don't get confused later. And now I'm going to create a, let's see, an adjustment layer. So what an adjustment layer does is any effects I add to the adjustment layer, it will be applied, not necessarily applied, but kind of like overlaid on the layers beneath it. So for example, if I do invert and I drag it onto the adjustment layer, it will invert everything. Um, obviously I don't wanna use invert. Um, I'm gonna search for something called CC ball action. And this is a really, really versatile um, tool. I use it to make stars in space. For example, if you increase the, the scatter, you kind of get something that kind of looks like stars, um, especially if you reduce the size. So you kind of have something that looks like stars. We obviously don't want stars. The, the preset actually looks, you know, you get a pretty good idea of what we're trying to do here. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna decrease the size of the balls. And I mean, you might wanna go for something that kind of looks like that. I mean, I don't know what you would want that for, but it kind of looks like a pixelated screen of some sort. Um, but I'm gonna actually just increase the, the grid spacing to one, and that makes the, the ball super small. And then I'm just going to increase the ball size until um, I get something that kind of looks like that. So that's super pixelated um, and doesn't really look all that good on the letters. It looks fine down here where there's boxes, but um, on the letters, it doesn't really look too great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this adjustment layer and I'm gonna decrease the opacity. So just till about there, that's when you kind of start to see the pixel pixelation around the text, but you still get the nice CC ball action um, effect. Now when I zoom out like this, you can't really tell, but um, on full screen, um, you can tell that it kind of looks a little bit different. It's again, very subtle, it's, it all adds to the effect. So let's go ahead and start laying some, some other things on here. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a a vignette around here. 
and I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid. I'm going to make it black. Hit OK. And then I'm going to right click, go to Mask, New Mask. And hitting M on the keyboard, it'll open up my mask. And I'm just going to change the shape by just clicking Shape and change it to Ellipse, which it already was on. And I'm going to hit OK. And for some reason, it didn't change it to an ellipse. Let me mess with this. There we go. I don't know why it was stuck on square, but I uh, just did it twice. You might run into that same issue. But now I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to hit inverted so I get the outer corners. And then I'm going to increase the feather. So it's going to be a pretty large feather. And then I'm going to decrease the opacity down. So just so you get a slight, slight, um, uh, I guess, vignette around here. So I'm just going to actually decrease the feather just slightly. So there you go. That already, you know, again, starts adding to this effect. So I'm just going to drag this underneath the, um, the, actually, I could probably leave this one above the adjustment layer. And I'm just going to rename this vignette, which I think I spelt that totally wrong, but that's okay. That's not the important part. So next up, uh, screens tend to have like a, a cooler tone, a bluish tone um, to it. So I'm just going to search for um, blue. And so there's some other, some couple things here under image creative. There's colorized blue wash, colorized sky blue. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you pick, but I'm just gonna pick the top one, drop it on the adjustment layer. And it just kind of adds again, just a little bit of coolness to this that gives it the effect that it's kind of a computer screen. Um, again, when I, when I remove these two layers, it just looks like a flat um, 2D animation. But when I add these, it, again, it starts to add to that effect. It's very minor, right? I mean, I'm not trying to fool you here. Um, in the video, it might not even come through, but this does look pixelated. So, um, okay, so next up would be the just the text coming across the screen. Um, m mind you, you actually can come in here and, and mess with these settings to make it look even more blue. So I just kind of, if it's negative, I just make it more negative. If it's positive, I just make it more positive. And you know, now you get an even a slightly even bluer effect. So that that might be what you're going for. Um, I happen to like it right about. I think there probably looks the best. Um, I just kept hitting Control Z, just going back um, in time. So, okay. So uh, now that our computer screen's done, now we could just add the text. Oh, the text being like typed on screen. So this is again pretty simple. Um, but the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need like um, I don't know what it's called, but it's where the it's where the text, I guess, comes in. So um, I just created a line here using the pen tool. I'm going to increase the stroke to maybe two and d make the color. I don't really like, love this color. It's too dark. I'm just going to make it a little bit lighter here, kind of like that. Even that might be too dark. Let's see. I hope I'm changing the right color. Yep, I am. So that looks probably about right. Um, I'm going to rename this to, um, I don't even know what this is called. Is it called a marker? I'm just going to call it a marker and I'm going to center up the anchor point. I'm going to use my tool this time, my motion toolbox, center up the anchor point. And I think it's not quite in the center of, of this. So I'm going to just drag it down until it snaps onto the center. So um, obviously if you've ever used a text editor before, um, you know that this thing blinks. So I'm just going to make this blink. And uh, while I'm here, actually, I should probably drag this underneath the um, the adjustment layer. And um, actually, what I'll also do is I'm actually just going to make this adjustment layer invisible for a sec um, as to make it so this composition loads faster. And then when I go to render, I'll just re-add the effect um, just by making this visible. So let's get this thing to blink. So I'm just going to hit T on the keyboard, set an opacity keyframe at 100 come to about 30 frames. Again, this is a 60 frame per second, so this is about half a second. Bring it down to zero, come to one second, bring it up to 100, and I think I didn't make it zero, so I'm just gonna click G on the keyboard to bounce it to the back, back to the last keyframe. Make sure that's zero. And then opening up the graph editor, I am just going to come down to value graph and highlight all of these and go easy ease and just drag these over as far as I can, as far as I can go. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, that looks a little goofy, so I'm just going to um, actually just use my, my motion tool script here. Um, let's see what, what that, okay, so this, this is kind of the graph that you wanna, that you wanna have here. 
you see that it's it's mine was a little bit um, mine was a little bit crazier than that so I think it kind of needs to be more like that and that looks pretty good I'm just gonna speed it up just a tiny bit more if you hold shift it keeps these straight So that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna exit the graph editor. And this is a really cool tip here. So uh, what you're gonna do is hold alt and hit the stopwatch here. And you get a little, a little, like it's like a play button. If you press that play button and you go to property loop out, um, it will actually loop these keyframes for the whole duration of the composition. So that way you don't have to copy and paste the keyframes if you end up changing something later. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, all I can, all I have to do is then cop, select these, holding Alt, I could drag this out and make the loop longer, and it doesn't mess up the whole, the whole composition. So, uh, just gonna now close this up, zip that up. I think that looks pretty good, and now it's time to add the text. So, just getting out the uh, the text typing tool. I'm just gonna search for um, Mobox graphics here, selecting all this. Let me just close that, zip that up. Um, bring the bring the text down, change the color to just an off black, and center up the anchor point. I'm gonna use my tool again, and just make sure it's right in the center of this. So the text here is gonna to wanna to start just about there. Um, I could probably even increase the size just a tad, and then drag it over. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for an effect called, uh, I think it's called Typewriter. And this is a text animation built in After Effects. And I'm just going to drop that right onto the Mo box and hit U on the keyboard. Um, U on the keyboard. And the, it already set keyframes for a start and finish. But uh, we all know that text, that you don't type all in a continuous linear um, fashion. So uh, what you could do is you can kind of just come here, set a keyframe, set a keyframe. You don't have to do it for every letter, but if you want if you want individual granular control over each letter, say you wanna match it up to audio, then you're gonna to wanna to set a keyframe for every letter. But basically I'm just setting keyframes for select letters and setting keyframes. So maybe in between Mobox, there's a larger break, so I could just extend these across. Um, Maybe I shrink that, so maybe the first two letters are are slower. So one, two, three, the first letters are kind of slow, and then the last two are fast. See? It kind of just makes it have a little bit more natural looking, I guess, type typing. And then I'm gonna kind of do the same for the other side, just kind of, again, making it look a little a little just, it's not as linear, right? So it just looks a little more random, which is kind of how the real world actually is. So now I'll, now what I can do is I can now take this, I should actually probably put this beneath the adjustment layer as well, but I could just take this marker. Oh, I wanna keep my keyframes up, so I'm gonna hit you on the keyboard to bring those back up. Uh, the first letter comes in right there. I'm just gonna make this marker invisible. So I'm actually just gonna snip it, Alt, right bracket, snips it there. I'm gonna duplicate this layer and drag it over. And then after the last letter comes in, it's gonna start blinking again, but I need the position to be on the other side of the text. So let's see what that looks like. So that looks pretty good. Um, now all we have to do is just re-add the adjustment layer in and see what we got, so. Coming to fit, I'm gonna save this so it doesn't crash on me because it tends to crash, T056. And I'm gonna hit play. So we take a look. So the first thing I'm seeing is that I think the text is probably too dark, but that's, again, not the important part. Um, but uh, I think overall it looks pretty good. Now, one last thing I'll show you. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, Please be sure to give this video a like if you want to see more, subscribe. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.